My name is Blakely Bruton, and the title of my research project is Rehabilitation After Fulkerson's Osteotomy, a Case Study. Here's the contents of what I'll be going over here the next couple minutes. So I'll be going over patient's history, what is a Fulkerson's Osteotomy, Rehabilitation, Limitations, and Results, Research is also supposed to be Patient's history. I did a case study on a 19-year-old female who is not an athlete. She tore her ACL twice, and after the first time of tearing her ACL, she had chronic patellar dislocation, which led her to have a Fulkerson's osteotomy, which the next slide I will explain what that is. Before arriving at Emory & Henry, she spent a total of four weeks at a physical therapy clinic in Roanoke where she received re rehabilitation for her knee. She ended up coming to Emory & Henry being seven weeks post-operation. She came in still on crutches and still wearing a brace that was locked in full extension. She had considerable setbacks due to the relapse in rehabilitation. What is a Fulkerson's osteotomy? A Fulkerson's osteotomy is a surgical procedure that consists of moving the tibial tuberosity medially and anteriorly to correct the alignment of the patella. There's a picture of how they actually cut the tibial tuberosity. And they don't like completely cut it off, they just cut the top and kind of move it over and screw it down. And then they attach the patella tendon back to it to align it up. The goal of a Fulkerson's osteotomy is to allow the weight-bearing line to become as normal as possible to reduce the stress it is putting on the compartments and the ligamentous structures. I found some research that named a couple of injuries that can lead you to having a Fulkerson's osteotomy. It said having, a, having an ACL injury and not getting it surgically repaired can lead you to having knee instability which in turn will cause patellar dislocation. An increased Q angle can increase the load on the medial patellofemoral ligament and it will result in pain. The medial patellofemoral ligament is the ligament that guides the patella into its groove. So whenever you have direct impact to this, injury, or to this ligament and you end up tearing it, there's no more guide to the patella so it goes basically wherever it wants. Also, they said patellofemoral pain syndrome can be caused either by direct impact or overuse. This surgery is very uncommon because there are many risks and there is complications that come along with having this surgery. I found some minor and major complications. Some minor complications include hardware pain, superficial infection, delayed union, hematoma, and tendonitis. Some major complications that somebody may see after having the surgery would include hardware failure, intraarticular fracture, deep infection, or a non-union. Rehabilitation. This rehabilitation process is three phases long. The first phase lasted about six weeks. And during this phase, my goals were to control the inflammation and pain, protect soft tissue and tubercle fixation, full active extension and 90 degrees of flexion, and achieve quadricep control. Phase two lasted about five weeks, and my goals for this phase were to increase the range of motion and strength. And during this phase, I ended up having to tell her to not wear her brace anymore because she wasn't concentrating on walking like she should have been. Phase three lasted about two and a half weeks. During this phase, my goal was to get her back to activities of daily living without any complications. Here are some of the exercises that I performed that I had her do during the phase one. We started out with short arc quads, straight leg raises, quad sets, and I also implemented four-way hips, weight shift, and flexion. I had to be careful during this phase because she hadn't done anything in weeks when she came to me, so I had to make sure that I did not stress that joint very much. Phase two exercises, we did knee flexion with band, knee extensions with weight, knee extensions with band also, and then terminal knee extensions. And I also implemented walking during this phase so I can help her concentrate on walking more than if her knee is gonna give out or if it's gonna continue hurting her 
or if it'll just, you know, give out on her again. Um, during the terminal knee extension, to progress from that, I actually took the weight off and started pushing down myself to get full extension for her. Phase three, uh, we started out with the bike exercises to get her warmed up. And we did mini squats, knee extensions, step ups. And we also implemented, I also implemented calf raises and flexion on the machine, just like the knee extensions. Limitations. My patient started at seven weeks post-operation, which I had no control over how, she, how far behind she was when she came to me. So I just did not know where to start. She was, I did not receive any surgical or medical notes which caused me to have to basically make my own rehabilitation and to look up the surgery because I had no idea what the surgery was about. She came in with a brace locked in full extension and on crutches. At that point in the re where she was seven weeks post-operation, she should not have been in a brace that was locked in full extension. It should have been just a regular brace walking. She should not have been limping with it. She was not willing to work hard. She had nothing to push her to get better. I had to every day push her to do every exercise as hard as she can so it would actually work and be effective. She missed many days during the rehabilitation and I could not control that, but she needed every day that we had to get better. She also had physical limitations during this, re this rehabilitation process. She ended up dislocating her shoulder. She fell down some steps and dislocated her shoulder and I had to, I had to um, modify my rehab because I could not have her laying on that shoulder and hurt her and cause further damage. She also had complications with her second toe on her left foot. It was in full flexion and she stood, when she stood up on it, it, she stood completely on her toe which caused radiating pain of her leg. So I had to be careful with all the exercises that I had with her standing. Results. As far as rehabilitation goes, my rehab, uh, rehabilitation protocol was successful in getting my patient back to activities, activities of daily living without any complications. My research project for, or my research question for this uh, case study was, does tearing the ACL cause someone to become a candidate for a Fulkerson's osteotomy? I hypothesized that during, this re that during my rehabilitation process, she was very apprehensive and guarded towards her knee. So who's to say that during the first rehabilitation pro program for her first ACL tear, she was not the same way? Therefore, a chance, there's a chance that her rehabilitation may have not been as effective because of her apprehension, apprehension and guarding. Because of this, the healing process may have been disrupted, therefore causing her to tear her ACL a second time, leading her to a Fulkerson's osteotomy. Even though I had a good hypothesis as to what may have led my patient to having a Fulkerson's osteotomy, I could not find any articles to support or refute my hypothesis. Therefore, more research is needed in order for me to answer this question appropriately. Any questions? What was the actual reason she had to have that operation? What was the she had chronic patellar dislocation. So. In order to fix this, she had to get a full percent off to Did it fix it? Yes. Or as of how long I knew her. But she also had multiple injuries before that. Like she had multiple surgeries over her meniscus. And then she had another repair over the first ACL tear. So she's. <laughs> she. I have no idea, but she. She went to the doctor towards, in phase three of our rehabilitation process, she went to the doctor to figure out what was wrong with it. It was literally like curled under her foot Is and she stood on it. Is that the same leg? Tractor That's her name? Yes, it was, actually. So, I'm not sure if what she found out about that, but it was a complication for sure. Do you know what her mechanism of injury was for either ACL tear? I asked and she never told me. I tried getting a ton of information out of her and she just 
he would not give it. I asked for the medical and surgical notes. She told me she'd give them to me, and I never received them. So, any more questions? Yes, ma'am.